Back at where the vlog started four years ago, Agua Caliente. We meet up with our best friend Marcelo, a local crusher here, and then give out a few stickers to some fans of the vlog. Enough shenanigans, you guys came for poker. We're into the 2-5 for $900. We kick off the action here in the 2-5 game with King Jack Offsuit, or should I say Jack King Offsuit, for all you sickos out there. We're in middle position and I raise it up to $15 and we get three callers. That means we are going four ways to a flop, which comes Ace-King-10 with two clubs. I have middle pair and the front door Broadway draw. Any queen would give me that straight. There are two clubs out there, so uh, when the villain in the big blind leads out for $40, a few things to be concerned about. It's possible we do not have the best hand at the moment, but having middle pair and a draw is pretty good, so I decided to toss in the 40 bucks, and we are going off to the turn. The turn is an interesting one. It comes the four of clubs, bringing in the obvious front door club draw. What also is interesting is the fact that the villain in the big blind decides to slow down and check. If we were behind on the flop, for instance, if you had an ace queen, ace nine, ace eight type of hand, and he didn't have a club, this could be a good card to start trying to put money in and blow him off a better hand. That being said, I do have showdown value, meaning I have a pair of kings. It beats a lot of other random draws and a pair of tens and stuff like that. So a lot of the times you don't want to turn that into a bluff. So I decide to check behind, bring in a queen. We now have the straight, but there are four clubs out there. A lot to be worried about, but not really when the big blind checks it over to me for a second time. Let's think about his line. He bet out on the flop and then check turn and river when the clubs come in. It's very, very unlikely that he does in fact have a club flush. I don't think he would be trapping on two streets. You got to get the money in when you have a good hand. And yeah, so I'm definitely reading into the fact that he seems weak. Now I do have a straight. Straights beat two pairs. They beat sets and all that kind of stuff. So although it is super, super thin value, I think I'm going to go for a bet here. I wouldn't blame anyone for checking behind and taking their showdown value, but let's try to get some thin, thin value versus an ace, and I bet out for $100. I think the sizing is way too large. I need to go like 50 to 75 if that's what I'm trying to accomplish and get thin value. If I'm trying to blow them off a weak club, this might be a good bet, although people at the low stakes aren't in the business of folding small flushes, so I think that this is just more of a value bet here. All in all, he finds the fold, and we are taking on that first hand of the night. All right, second hand of the night is a good one. I look down at American Airlines from the big blind. Under the gun straddles on, there's two callers over to the small blind who makes it $20. Very respectable raise there. It's a min raise. The action's on me. I'm not gonna let that go unpunished. We have the best hand ever created in the game of No Limit Hold'em. And I decided to come in for a three bet and make it $95. Maybe it could be going larger. Is $95 a tell, meaning I want people to call and uh, I don't want them to get scared if I put 100 out there. Who knows? I'd make it $95. We're gonna get two customers, the straddle and the small blind, both call. We are going three ways to a flop, which comes king six four with two diamonds. Pretty groovy if you ask me. The small blind starts with a check. The action's on me. I'm out of position against the under the gun straddler. And you know me, usually I'll go for a check in these spots when I'm in between two opponents. But here's the arguments that led me to actually go for a bet here. There's the uh, front door diamond draw. I think a lot of the opponents are gonna have a king in their range. I just wanna start piling money in and making the most of the situation. So I forego my usual routine and instead of checking, I go for a nice healthy bet here of 165 smackaroonies. Only the straddle decides to put in the call. Yes, the small blind gets out of the way. And just like that, we are going heads up out of position to a turn, which comes the 10 of hearts. Really shouldn't change too much. He's either gonna have that front door diamond draw. You could have some other draws like five, seven and five, three. Of course, you could have a hand like king, queen, king, jack, king, 10, king, nine. So I guess the 10 is kind of a scare card if you did have a hand like king 10, but that's a very, very small chance he has that exact type of hand. So uh, yeah, I look over at his stack. He has around 600 to $700 in his stack. There's just over 600 in the middle. The stack to pot ratio is around one to one. And uh, if he has a flush draw, I don't want to give him a cheap price and then he misses and he just folds the river. So let's get it in now. I don't think a king can fold. I don't think any of those draws can fold. Hopefully he doesn't have a set. Let's put it all in and see what he has. I rip it all in and he in fact does put in the call. So just like that, we are playing a nearly $2,000 pot here at the 2-5 game at Agua Caliente. We're looking for a non-diamond 
non-8, non-3, and maybe not even a 9. Those would be the scare cards we don't want to see. A jack doesn't really seem to be too much of an issue unless he has king jack. I turn over my pair of aces and unfortunately the turn was a bad card. He has king 10 of clubs. Called the $95 pre, called the flop bet, and uh, yeah, he gets the money in good on the turn and getting rewarded with that $2,000 pot. Doesn't feel great, although it is my home casino where I started this vlog four long years ago. The home court advantage has uh, wiped away apparently, and we are going back into our pocket, rebuying for an additional $900. All right, let's try to get some back in this next hand. I have $1,000 in my stack. I looked down at the beautiful ace-king offsuit from the hijack. Under the gun raises up to $25 and the player on my right puts in the call. The action on me, I'm coming in for a three bet and I decide to make it $100. Pretty good sizing for me. Both players agree and put in the call, leading us off three ways to a flop, which comes queen high. Queen four four with two clubs. The low jack decides to donk out into the field for $40. And when the player on my right puts in the call, the action's on me. I have the backdoor club draw. I have two over cards I could back into a straight. So I decide to toss in the 40 bucks. It's probably lighting money on fire, but it's such a great price. And uh, yeah, like Bob Barker, the price is right. I put in the call and we are off to the turn, which comes with three of hearts. The action surprisingly checks over to me on the turn. Could I be stabbing here? I think when both players check over to me on the turn, they are pretty weak. Either they're gonna have a weak queen, they could have some pocket pairs between fours and tens, I'd say. And of course they could have the front door club draw. So for that reason, I decide to play it tricky here and bet out for $175. I'm trying to set up a multi-street bluff. If they call me with a club draw and it breaks out on the river, I could pile more money in and try to get them to fold. Additionally, I think a bet here on the turn accomplishes a lot. For instance, fives, sixes, pocket sevens, they're all gonna fold here, I think. And uh, yeah, we're only gonna get called by those strong club draws and of course, any queen. So I set up a nice riverside bet here with a bet on the turn of $175, expecting at least one player to call. And our suspicions are confirmed when both players decide to put in the call. And that brings in quite possibly the worst river card, which is a nine of clubs. Going to be shutting down here on the river when the obvious front door draw completes. And yeah, we don't even have the chance to do so when the under the gun player decides to go all in for around $300. Obviously when it comes around to me, I find the fold no brainer for me, but uh, yeah, bummer, we are not scooping in that $1,200 pot. A non club on the river, you have my word, I was gonna go for the bluff. We top up an additional $200 and we get rewarded with the beautiful ace jack of hearts and I raise it up to $30 over a few limpers. We are going five ways to the flop when four players decide to put in the call. And it gives us top pair, although it is a monotone board, ace, nine, five, all clubs. It's a monotone board mixed with the fact that there are five players in this hand, so I decide to check, and the action gets checked around, bringing in the nine of diamonds on the turn. I start with a check again, and no one wants to put more money in the middle. So that brings in the deuce of hearts on the river, I think at this point, I definitely have the best hand. Someone would have bet a nine or a better ace or a flopped flush at this point. So there's 150 in the middle. I go for thin value for 50 bones. And the big blind puts in the call. Look at that. We are gonna show our hand and uh, scoop it down. Nice to go for thin value there on the river. If you think your hand's good, bet it and uh, let the opponents tell you otherwise. $250 coming into our chip stack. We top up an additional $1,000 so this next hand we have $1,600 in our stack. Look down a king queen offsuit from the cutoff and raise it up to $25. Only the button puts in the call that means we are going heads up out of position to a flop which seems pretty great for me it comes king high. King 6-4 to be exact and although there are some front door diamond draws out there I think checking is a pretty decent play in the long run. It's going to confuse the opponent we could get two streets on the turn and river. We could also call a flop bet if he decides to bet out. I think betting definitely is the higher percentage route, but if you wanna change up your play from here and there, starting with a check can't be the worst play. That's what I decide to do, and the button takes the bait and bets out for $20. Check raising could be the move. It would represent sets like pocket sixes, pocket fours, pocket kings, and uh, some of those nut flush draws like ace five of diamonds and ace three of diamonds. Not too often I'm just gonna have a king x combo here, so I decide just to put in the call and see what happens on the turn. The turn comes the jack of spades, so now a hand that we would be losing to that we had beat on the flop would be a hand like king jack. Either way, I'm not gonna be donking out into him, so I start with a check once again. And uh, this is the problem with not check raising the flop. The button decides to check behind, bringing in another jack, the jack of hearts on the river. 
this point, I'm gonna go for thin value. There's 107 in the middle, and I bet out small for $30. I don't think I need to go too large. Uh, he probably has a hand like pocket nines, pocket eights, pocket sevens, so yeah. I need to go for a small bet here and try to get called. All of his flush draws are gonna fold. Additionally, going for a small bet is kind of cool because he could decide to raise any of his busted diamond draws, in which case I am snap calling a raise. So yeah, like the small bet for me here, and uh, he decides to put in the call. I turn over my king. It's possible he just called there to see what kind of hand I had. But uh, yeah, he mucks his hand and we are moving right along into the next one where I look down at ace-king offsuit from under the gun and start off with a raise to $30. If I was to get three bet, it wouldn't be strange. That's of course in the repertoire of every good poker player putting in a three bet, but that's in fact what happens. What is strange though is the sizing. He min click three bets me to $60. What do you guys make of this? The min click, I don't really see this too often. Interested to know down in the comments, have you guys been exposed to the min three bet from the button, we are under the gun. So if he's just thinking about our range, which he probably isn't because it's a 2-5 game in the middle of California, under the gun, I should be playing a lot more snug. So when he three bets me, he should be going for a normal sizing of $90. So let me know down in the comments, what does this mean? Uh, what is this player trying to accomplish with a min bet? Or does it not make any sense and we shouldn't read into it? I was a little confused in the moment. I definitely, against a normal size raise, would probably come in for a four bet to around $250 if he made it a normal size, but instead I just put in the call. I mean, min raises sometimes are aces and kings, right? Even though I have it blocked, I put in the call. Let's go off to a flop, which is pretty good for us. It comes a six deuce with two spades. Not gonna lead out into him. I start with a check and he decides to go for a C bet to the tune of $130. We flop quite possibly the best hand that we could have expected. So I'm not going anywhere. Raising seems like lighting money on fire because it gets rid of all of his bluffs and uh, his pocket aces. And pocket sixes, if he has that in his range, are going to snap call me. So I decide just to put in the call and that brings in the turn card, which isn't a great card, it comes a queen. I say not a great card because a hand he could have been raising me preflop with is of course ace-queen offsuit and ace-queen suited, now both of which have me beat. Still, I mean, he's gonna have to tell the story that he has a better hand. I start with a check. Is he going to put more money in the middle? No, he decides to check behind, which is definitely a good sign. I think pocket queens and ace queen would have bet this turn, considering the fact there are two spades and two clubs out there. So when he checks behind and the river comes a nine of clubs, uh, I think I'm gonna go for thin value here and I lead out for $100. I think 100 is the right price to go. The uh, backdoor club draw gets there, but the front door spade draw misses. He could have a worse ace like ace jack. We could be chopping versus ace king. And like I said, I don't really expect him to play ace-queen this way unless he was a trappy player, which he could be. I mean, I don't really know anything on the opponent. Expecting him to either call or fold. And of course, he does neither and jams all in for $375. And the action's back over to me. Now, it's pretty trivial. He only has $275 more for me to call into a decent-sized pot. But at the same time, I also bet small to fold to a raise. Yes, it sounds crazy folding ace-king to a raise, but he's representing such a narrow range. It's only 275 more dollars, so this can never be a bluff. I mean, it's only 275 more dollars. How could he be bluffing here? Either as a hand like ace-queen, pocket aces, pocket queens, that's it. Or maybe he backed into a hand that has two clubs in it. It's kind of hard for that though, because I have the king of clubs in my hand, so he can't have ace-king of clubs or he can't even have king queen of clubs because both cards are out there. A spot that I definitely want to put the 275 in because it's not really much more money. At the same time though, you gotta be making the right play and betting 100 here and then him jamming is just never a bluff. So even though it's 275 more, I decide to fold. You can roast me down in the comments if you think this is a bad fold. I think it was a good one and uh, yeah, he does not show his card. So unfortunately we can't get rewarded. I turned mine face up. So I think if he was bluffing, he would have showed it to the table and earned some street cred. You can let me know down in the comments, but I later asked him and he said he had a suited ace that ended up making two pair. So uh, just looking at the board here, maybe he had a hand like ace queen of diamonds, ace nine of diamonds. Yeah, interesting uh, spot there, but I uh, definitely believe him. He would have showed the bluff, I think, and uh, nice of him to let me know uh, after the hand there and save me a little bit of shame if I ended up making a bad fold, which I didn't. Let's go. Quick side note for all you guys that like to play online, I have found the three best clubs that I've been playing on almost every night. And I put that link down in the description and pinned it in the comments. That's a Telegram link. You just have to download the app Telegram to open it up, but it'll take you to my favorite three clubs that I play in all the time. Club one is a one-two game. 
Club 2 is a 25 cent, 50 cent game, and Club 3 has everything. And uh, yeah, super fun, super trustworthy. If you guys wanna play with me, go check out that link down below. Let's get back into the hands. All right, Pocket Aces let us down earlier in the video. They're coming back and they have something to prove. Let's see if we can win with them for the second time. I'm in the cutoff and open it up to $35 over a straddle. And the button three bets me to $120, which is pretty sweet. Nothing better than starting off with a raise and getting three bet and you're holding the best hand in poker. Of course, I'm gonna be four betting for $335. I like that sizing here. I think calling is good sometimes, but definitely a big mistake in this spot. For one thing, I'm stuck in the session. For another, I'm playing a lot of hands at this point, so I think people could be putting me on a wider range. Gotta be four betting and getting more money in. Also, I don't wanna go out of position the rest of the way, so I come in for a four bet to $335. And uh, yeah, four betting is also great because it reopens the action and he five bet jams to $700. Look at that, how lucky are we? I put in the call and we are going off to a run out. We're feeling pretty great about the hand until we see a king on the flop. Oh geez, the five bet jam is gonna have a lot of pocket kings in it. Hopefully he has queens or jacks instead. Oh, of course, the turn comes a jack. What a disaster, now we're losing to that. But the river comes the ace of spades. Let's go, no slow roll coming for me. I'm sorry to all the vlog watchers who wanted to see what he had, but I turned it up right away. I didn't want to slow roll him. Of course he mucks his cards. Did we need the river? I don't know, it's possible he had kings or jacks there. Either way, I'm pretty stoked to be taking down that $1,400 pot. Finally winning a big hand feels pretty great. Moving right along into the next one, I have 2K in my stack and I look down at pocket tens on the button. Big pocket pair, one after the next. The plus one raises it up to $25 over the straddle. One player puts in the call and of course, I'm gonna come in for a three bet and I make it a cool $100. One Benjamin is the price to go. The big blind puts in the call, which is definitely strange, cold calling the $100 raise. And the under the limper puts in the call as well. And both $25 callers put in the call as well. We are going extremely multi-way to a flop. We have pocket tens, $500 in the middle, and the flop comes nine high. Action checks over to me like I would expect it to, and we're really only losing to pocket pairs here. All of the two pair combinations seem kind of weird. For instance, is anyone calling preflop with nine four, nine deuce, four deuce? Seems a little bit unlikely, but all the pocket pairs are definitely in their range. Still, I'm gonna go for a bet here and try to fold out a lot of those over cards and uh, maybe get called by pocket eights, pocket sevens, pocket sixes. I decide that $150 is the right price. and We're only gonna get one customer under the gun puts in the call. There's really no draws out there. So he either has a nine in his hand or he has us beat with a set that doesn't wanna raise his flop and send off alarm bells. Either way, we are going to proceed to the turn which comes the queen of spades, which should be a better card for my range than his. Of course, at these low stakes games, nothing makes sense. The opponent decides to jam in my face. Luckily, it's only for $213. And now at this point, I think I can put in the call. I mean, it's $200 to win a pot of 1,000. I have pocket tens, there is an over card out there. At this point, he's representing a set. Still, I can't get away for that cheap of a price. I put in the call and we are going off to the river. River comes a six of clubs and the opponent immediately turns over pocket deuces. Yep, that flop set, I had a feeling we were up against it and $1,200 are going his way. Just couldn't get away there with uh, pocket tens in that spot. All right, $1,500 in our stack. I looked down at nine seven of clubs from the plus one position. I raise it up to $30 and we get four callers. The action here is phenomenal. We're going off to a flop five ways, which comes ace, eight, three with two clubs. The action checks over to me. Obviously pretty great for my hand. I have the front door club draw. And uh, yeah, I can represent all the strong aces. So I decide to bet out for $55. Dallas on my left puts in the call. No, I'm not talking about the city. His parents decided to name him Dallas, which I think is pretty badass. And uh, yeah, he puts in the call and the button decides to jam all in for $458. The action folds back around to me and yeah, it's around $400 more to call. That's all he has. I look over at Dallas's stack. He has around $1,100 and I have them both covered. I wanna put in the call here against the button because I know my club draw is live. At this point, I'm putting him on a set or a two pair with the ace in it. The only problem is if I put in the call here, Dallas could decide to rip it all in. And then we would be forced to call off and he could definitely have some strong flush draws in his range. However, when he just calls the $55, I don't really think it's likely he's going to rip it all in. So I think the two most likely options are him putting in the call or even more likely than that is him just folding. 
Either way, I came here to gamble, and I'm gambling that Dallas doesn't rip it in our face, and I put in the call for around $403 more. Let's gamble, and uh, lucky for us, Dallas decides to let his hand go. Great news for us. Hopefully, he didn't have two clubs in it. We need to see one on the turn or the river. We are going off to a run out. The opponent turns over ace eight of hearts. And of course the turn gives us the help we needed immediately. The deuce of clubs comes in. We have the best hand. Barring no ace or eight on the river, we are scooping in this $1,100 pot. And the river card comes a clean queen of hearts. Look at that, the opponent looks disgusted and uh, we're gonna chat it up with some of our friends at the table. Da -da 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 -da. This is sports. Breaking news, fish goes all in with flush rock. <laughs> and gets rewarded. Yeah, that's rewarded. Big time. Bang. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> Got put Dallas in there too. What'd you fold, Dallas? What'd you say? What did you fold? Ace Jack. Jack. What a net. You saw it here. <laughs> you saw it here first. You Ace saw it here Jack. first. All right, 2100 in our stack. It's going up, it's going down. It's like cryptocurrency these days. We look down at King Jack offsuit from the button. Straddles on, few limpers over to me, and I make it $55. Pretty standard so far. And Dallas in the small blind puts in the call, bringing in one other player as well. We're going three ways in position to a flop. And it comes decent for everybody else but me. It comes eight, five, deuce with two diamonds. Uh, I say decent for everybody else but me because obviously I have king high here. So when everybody checks it to me, I'm a dingus and decide to bet out here. I think this is definitely just a check behind. Betting here allows the opponents to come in for a check raise and blow me off my hand. And uh, yeah, that's not really great because I do have some equity. I can't be dead in this spot. Any king, jack, or maybe running diamonds would give me a good hand. So very important here that in the future, I decide to check behind here, even though I could represent all my over pairs. It's so much easier for them to have two pairs, sets, and uh, some straight and flush draws. I've been out for $55 and Dallas is the only customer. He puts in the call, bringing us off to the turn. Turn's an interesting card, it comes the Ace of Diamonds. Now that card is very good for my range. I can represent all the Ace-X combos that decided to see bet on the flop. Additionally, I have the Jack of Diamonds in my hand, so I have the third nut flush draw. Any King or Queen would have me beat, of course. That's a pretty good hand to have, so when Dallas checks over to me, I look over at his stack, he has around 200 left. There's 285 in the middle, and uh, if we're gonna bluff here, we have to go for the maximum, go for the jugular. I put in a stack of green chips, having him covered, and uh, he doesn't love it, but he ends up relinquishing his hand, folding, and uh, we get it through. I let him choose a card for the fun of the game, and he turns over the king of hearts, so probably not the card he wanted to see, but uh, yeah, gotta get the bluff through there, and luckily it worked for us. right along into the next one, 10 at nine of clubs from the hijack. And I raise it up to $30, garnering two calls. We are going three ways to the flop. Flop comes ace, jack, seven with two clubs and the action checks over to me, having a gutter to the straight flush. The eight of clubs would be a miracle card to see on the turn, but uh, we're not at the turn just yet. I'm gonna start here with a C bet of $50 and both players put in the call. And uh, normally with 10 high, we wouldn't be liking this. However, I think I can win this hand here. With a lot of options, any eight would give me a straight, the eight of clubs gives me the nuts, and uh, yeah, any club would be great as well. And if they just check to me and I break out everything, could just bomb it here and represent pocket aces or pocket jacks. Both players put in the call on the flop and we are going still three ways to the turn, which comes another good card for my range, the king of diamonds. The action checks over to me for a second time. And like I said on the flop, in case we break everything in the turn, which is exactly what happened, we can still bomb it and represent all the strong two pair and set combos. And that's what I do. I bet out two thirds of the size of the pot for $190. I expect to get a lot of folds and that's what we get in one spot, but uh, not from middle position. He puts in the call, bringing in the queen of spades on the river. Bang, we river the straight. Such a sneaky hand that I even forgot during this audio that I had a gutter on the turn. So I like my bet on the turn that much more now. We just backed into the nuts. Nobody can have us beat. We can only be chopping, although I think it's definitely unlikely given the way we played this hand for him to have a 10 in his hand. So when he checks over to me, I'm gonna go for some thick, thick value here and try to target any of his aces or two pair like King Jack, maybe a seven, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I go out for $425. Love the sizing here. Maybe I could be over betting and try to tell the story of a busted club draw, which is exactly what I have. So it would make a lot of sense. 
However, I did in fact back into the nuts. The opponent goes into the tank for a while, which we love to see. We put him in a gross spot. Hopefully he's gonna convince himself I missed my flush draw. But in the end, he doesn't, he decides to fold. Still pretty great, I got there on the river. I think even if I didn't, I would have gone for the bet. And uh, most likely it would have worked out. And uh, that's pretty great. And uh, yeah, more chips coming my way. Bringing us into the second to last hand of the night, queen five offsuit in a $15 bomb pot. And of course we flop top two. If we're playing a bomb pot and it made the vlog, you know it's gonna be a fun hand. Big blind bets out for $65. Middle position jams for 191 and the action's on us. Having top two is pretty great, but there's a bet and a jam. Does someone have a spade draw? Does someone have a strong queen? Do they have pocket fives or pocket threes? I don't know, but uh, what I do know is we are going to find out. I put in the call and the big blind decides to fold. So kind of a strange line from him there betting out. Seeing a jam and a call and then just folding for 130 bucks more, he must have had a terrible hand. We're going off to a run out with middle position, no more action, only two cards to come. Let's see what the dealer puts out there. Turn comes the ace of diamonds, not the worst card in the deck. We don't want to see a spade on the river and it doesn't come. The seven of diamond peels off. He turns over six four offsuit, so it looks like we won that hand. Until I read the board one more time and he backed into the straight. He had the open end straight draw on the flop. That's Poker Taco. Go check him out on all social media platforms. Great for the game. And yeah, he gets it in there with the open ended straight draw on the two spade board. Of course, he hits $582 going his way. Bring us into the last hand of the night. Pocket jiggities from the button. Straddles on, there's one caller and I raise it up to $55. Seen this move a few times before. Both players put in the call. That means we are going three ways to the flop, which comes queen, jack, six, bang, we flop, middle, set. Last hand of the night, we get the mojo. The poker gods reward us. Let's see if we can get unstuck in this video. The action checks over to me. I bet out for $105. So many hands to get value from. Ace, king, king, 10, 10, nine, two club draws, queen, jack, pocket sixes. You get the point. There's the entire deck, two players, two customers in the hand and everybody folds. That's sometimes how poker goes. You're gonna buy in a bunch of times, you're gonna make some good hands, you're gonna lose some big ones as well, and finally at the end of the night, when you think you're gonna get it all back, you make the C-bet and uh, nobody has squad douche. Still, taking down $172 is a welcome sight. We rack up our chips and head over to the cage. Although it's a lot of chips, keep in mind we were in for 3K. Let's see how we did. All right, guys, that wraps up a little two five session here at Agua. We got in for a thousand, topped up an additional thousand, then another a thousand. So in for three, out for 2,300. Not the best results, but a lot of fun people that we met. Shout out to Jose, shout out to Scott, Dallas, and of course, Marcelo, the, the Marshall in legend. He's got to get that poker vlog back up. But yeah, always fun times out here at Agua. We lost $700, but I think if I played a few more hours, I could have got it back. But it's one in the morning. I got to get up at 8 a.m. and drive to Los Angeles. Maybe play on some Hustler Lives coming up soon. If you guys are new, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Good luck on the felt if you guys play in the near future. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video. Peace!